So I just got back from my final day at the Pacific Northwest Board Game Festival. I said I would get the convention, board game convention, South Sound Board Game Convention. I said I'd get the name right, and I'll put the, the right name in the title for these, um, these AARs from the convention. Um, and uh, I'm rather tired, as... Uh, all of these videos I think I did while I was rather tired. Um, I did a, but I really enjoyed it and I want to get that across verbally because I think, non-verbally, I don't think I'm able to express how much fun I had. I did a lot of my whooping it up at the convention and, you know, uh, uh, compacting all of that fun in a one time period can be exhausting. Um, I'm a firm believer that not a firm believer, but I'm a believer that it would probably be more healthy if we were able to kind of spread it out more. But there's something special about having this sort of space that you can go away to and um, have this kind of comfortable, enjoyable experience. Um, so today, let's see, I got there. It was much, much smaller crowd today. The hours were diminished. It was from 9 to 4 rather than like Saturday. I think it was like 8.30 till midnight or something. Um, so less people showed up, which is fine. It was, it was, uh, it worked well, I think, for me who went there all three days to have this kind of wind down day. I, I don't know what did I play. I played Courtier, which was, uh, which was a nice game. I, I would play it again. Um, what I liked about it was that it's a game that you could kind of sit back and play. And you can also lean forward and play it. And you can enjoy it either way. Um, some Most games are one or the other, I think. Um, but this is a game that you can kind of do either way and still be effective. Like, I kind of sat back and played it. It wasn't really very talkative. But I was still able to perform well in the game's terms. Um, didn't have all the energy. And then towards the afternoon, I got more energy. I played Sneaks and Snitches. But <laughs> like when I started that game, it was kind of like this on the table. Very tired. I was ex not kind of like this. I was like this on the table because I was very tired. But then I, I picked up in um, what did I? I? I did a game of innovation, but the 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 convention was like starting to be taken apart around me as I was playing innovation. But it was a lot of fun. Uh, but we didn't finish. But that was a good silly game to end things off. Uh, not that innovation is inherently silly, though. There's some silliness to it. Um, just that playing of it was very silly and a lot of fun. Uh, just kind of a, a smaller crowd of, of the, the true believers uh, who have blue wristbands. And blue wristbands mean you, you get to be there every day for $20. Um, so I thought it, it would be nice to, to, to describe what all it took to bring me this nice experience. And I think a lot of other people had other nice, great experiences too. It seemed like people were generally happy with, with how it all turned out, but I can only speak from my own experience. So first of all, um, there's a bike trail that I take that gets me pretty much all the way there. And it's, I don't know how, maybe five to seven miles from my house, maybe. Um, and most of it I can take a bike trail. So first of all, whoever made that bike trail, that, that was a good part of my experience, going out in the morning and um, the first two days were very foggy, but having this nice trail to take me there where I didn't have to think so much about traffic and I could let my mind think about other things was really nice through the woods. Um, and I know other parts of the country maybe don't have that. Um, other parts of the world maybe don't have that. So that's something I really appreciated, especially since the place is kind of out of town. Um, so there's that, and then there's the person who told me that the bike trail would take me there. I mean, I was aware that, like, most of the bike trail, but not the part that took me actually there, the, the final leg, which is on the other side of this kind of mall area, parking lot. Um, the bike trail breaks at this big road, and I didn't know that it, that it continues. So someone told me about that, and that was a big help. Then there's my, my wife, who gave me the weekend to go to this thing. Um, you know, there's... There's a domestic exchange, so I could get that, but she was very accommodating. She even made me a lunch one day. Um, and then, really importantly, are the, the people who put it on. So first of all, there was the person who, up, who fronted the money up, 
which is a local um, game store owner, she put the money up. They paid her back, the, the organizers, and I think the organizers deserve big props for putting this on for everyone. It was very much a, an act of love and not, uh, they weren't profiting, I don't think, off of it. Even, you know, all the, they had, they made a profit after they had um, paid the business owner back. And so they took that money and they bought everyone pizza. And then, you know, they were selling snacks to people for 50 cents each, which is a good price, I think. Um, and then they just decided to let people eat the snacks after they'd kind of already, you know, made the money back. And so there's them. And then they, you know, did all this work and kind of donated all this time leading up to and including the event. And they may be still cleaning up now. I don't know. But all of those folks uh, really made it a great experience. Um, what else did they do? They put on little events like... Uh, there was like a, uh, the Rotator Cup tournament I talked about. There was, I think, some other events. Uh, there was a King of Tokyo tournament that I had no part of. I think I was doing something else at the time. Um, and there was just the right amount of events. It was a lot of open gaming, which I appreciated. Um, but there were some events to kind of make it feel special, too. Um, so they did all of that and kind of really ran themselves ragged, I think, to some extent, but also got a lot out of it as well. So all of them. Then there was uh, all the great people there. There was a lot of people I didn't know who were friendly and uh, introduced themselves and, and you know and interacted in interesting ways, and that made the whole thing great. And then there was people I already knew who kind of uh, gave me some friend support through the thing with all these these strangers, and uh, those were great. There was a, a couple of particular people who kind of my convention buddies, and I really appreciated having them there. I didn't know that they were going to come or not, um, but they came, and it was it was just really nice. And uh, One gave me a ride home every night, uh, which makes it easier, because, <laughs> you know, once it's midnight, to ride home then with a bunch of games is kind of tiring, um, especially if you have to get up at like 6 or so the next day. Um, so all of that made the convention work, and it... I marvel at all the little pieces that have to fall into place. Um, I had some lots of good conversations, one of them relating to what I'm talking about uh, over the convention, I had lots of good conversations, was about um, why or how different board gamers can behave with their games. Like when teaching a game, this is something that kind of came up several times uh, when talking to people or hearing people's conversations, when teaching a game how they can behave, whether some will kind of give you the bare bones and then beat you senseless because they want to win the game and they're competing, you know, and most board games are inherently competitive, at least in their rule set. Um, most, though, I think, at least in the, the, the group of this convention and in other groups I game with, will... Um, they'll be a bit more forgiving in that, you know, they're teaching you a game and they want you to enjoy the experience too. And one thing that occurred to me is that's in your best interest, I think, when when engaging in, in a hobby and an activity like this that's not super widespread. If you want people to play with, especially if it's like you're teaching a game that you know well, right, which is probably a game you want to play, and it's kind of a treasure, at least from my perspective, to have someone who's willing to play those games with you. So in that case, you want it to be enjoyable for them, too. And part of that is giving them the opportunity to actually play the game and not making it so that they are just kind of destroyed. Um, so that was an interesting thing. So overall, I, I think this event's great. I'm really, I feel really fortunate to be able to have gone. Um, I think they might be doing another one in the spring. So if you're in the area, you could check it out. Otherwise, next year, I think it's something they're going to continue and kind of build um, and keep it kind of, I think, I, from what I hear, kind of a, a warmer atmosphere. Uh, oh, uh, what, another person who made it happen was whoever rented out this Grange Hall. This Grange Hall is very interesting. It's an, it's an old kind of, I don't know if you know what a Grange Hall is. It's like a 
like a rural kind of dance hall that, uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's what it is. Um, but in, yeah, an interesting building, and I think that really added to it too. It didn't feel like a sterile environment. Because buildings aid, they kind of take on a character, they kind of uh, grow a personality. And uh, I think that that was a, an unseen, pre well, a very seen presence, but also like a, maybe not a, as uh, flamboyant a presence that added to the whole experience. So lots of, lots of great stuff, lots of great gaming, got a lot of uh, interesting experiences, a whole sort of story to the day, or to the weekend, um, kind of almost contained, but will also continue on into uh, the coming weeks.